Hey, when should we use a signal effect? Angular version 19 includes a change to effect and introduces several additional signal features. Does that change the guidance? An effect is an operation that runs whenever one or more signal values change. Does that mean we should use it anytime we want to react to changes in a signal? In this video, we walk through several scenarios, examining an effect-based approach and an alternate approach. Then we look at the version 19 changes to the effect function and summarize suggested guidelines. I'm in StockBlitz, looking at a very simple sample application. Here is a list of vehicles for selection, and we can enter our desired quantity. In our first scenario, we calculate the total cost and set the total text color. If the user buys enough, the color turns green and they get free shipping. Looking at the code, we could define an effect. We reference the selected vehicle in quantity signals within the effect. When either signal changes, this code will re-execute, recalculating the total amount and setting that into the total signal. When the total signal changes, we recompare the amount and set the appropriate text color. But there is a much better way to accomplish this task using computed signals. We'll change the total signal here to a computed and paste in the desired calculation. Then change the color signal to a computed and paste in the logic. Now we can delete this effect. By using a computed signal, we get dependency tracking. When any reference signal changes, the computed is automatically recalculated. We get lazy evaluation. The total and color are only calculated when they are read. And we get memoization. Subsequent reads return the cached value, improving performance. Plus, it's much more declarative. Here, where we declare the variable, we define how it should be calculated. Scrolling up, notice that our signals up here are of type writable signal, but our computed are of type signal. They are read-only, which is fine for this case, but there may be times we want to reset a writable signal when a reference signal changes. Do we use an effect in that case? Looking at the UI, let's select a vehicle and pick a quantity. Now pick another vehicle. The quantity really should reset back to 1. In the code, I'll uncomment this effect. If the selected vehicle signal changes and the value is not null or undefined, we reset the quantity to 1. Trying it out in the UI, select a vehicle, pick a quantity, then select another vehicle. The quantity resets to 1. It works! But there is a better way. Starting in version 19, we now have linked signal. Let's try that instead. Up here, we'll change the quantity signal to a linked signal and pass in an object. A linked signal takes a source, which is a function that defines one or more linked signals. We want to reset the quantity when the selected vehicle changes, so let's set the source to this dot selected vehicle. Next, we set the computation function, which is the calculation performed when the link signals change. In this case, we reset the quantity to 1. Now let's delete the effect. Trying it out, select a vehicle and a quantity, then another vehicle. And it works! It resets the quantity to 1. Hovering over quantity, it's still a writable signal. Cool! And notice that this code is also more declarative. Directly on the declaration, we see the quantity is reset to 1 when the selected vehicle changes. For more information on the very useful link signal feature, check out my video, First Look at Angular's new link signal. Bottom line, no need for an effect here either. Another common scenario is to get related data when a user selection changes. Here, when the user selects a different vehicle, a related movie title is retrieved and displayed. Looking at the code, we could use an effect to react to a change in the selected vehicle signal and retrieve the related data. But then we have to manually manage the subscription. 
Let's try out the new Rx resource instead. Scrolling up, you can find Rx resource in the rxjs-interop library. Scrolling back down, let's declare a movie resource and call Rx resource, passing in an object. We set the request function to a signal, this dot selected vehicle. When this signal changes, the loader function is re-executed. Next, we pass in that loader function. Here we call HTTP GET, passing in the URL. Notice that we don't have to subscribe here. Rx Resource manages our subscription for us. The loader function returns a resource, not a signal. We use the resource value property to access the data returned from the HTTP request as a signal. So let's change our movie signal here to a computed. Then return this dot movie resource dot value to access the signal from the resource. Now we can delete that effect and see if it still works. Select a vehicle and we see a movie title. Select another vehicle and it retrieves another movie title. Nice. Use resource and Rx resource anytime you need to perform an async operation and return a signal. Check out my video, First Look at Angular's New Resource and Rx Resource, for more information. So far, we've found approaches that don't require an effect. Let's look at one more use case, logging out signals as they change. Here we use an effect to call console.log. Since this reads the signal, it tracks it as a dependency. It will then log the value whenever the signal changes. Open the console, and we see our quantity and selected vehicle. We've now found a great use case for an effect. I'll close the console. So what's changed with effects in version 19? Here's the reference documentation. Notice that effect is still in developer preview, meaning it could change further before it's official. One of the key changes to effect is in the timing. Effects are now run as part of the component hierarchy during change detection. This makes the timing of effects more predictable. Also, to encourage good patterns when using effect, the Angular team originally set up guardrails to prevent writing to signals within an effect. If you've ever seen the message, writing to signals is not allowed in an effect, you've seen these guardrails. Looking at the effect options, the Allow Signal Writes allowed us to bypass the Angular team's guardrails and write to a signal within an effect. Notice that this option is crossed off. It's no longer available. Does that mean we can no longer write to a signal from within an effect? Nope. It means that signal writes are now allowed by default. Does that mean we should routinely write to signals in our effects? Nope. As we've seen in this video, in many cases there is an alternative signal feature we can use instead. The recommended guidance is to use an effect as a last resort or fallback option only if none of the other signal features provide the needed functionality. Here's a decision tree to help you determine the appropriate signal technique. Does the code need to react to a change in a signal? If not, use a regular function. When the code reacts to a signal change, does it set a signal that could be read-only? If yes, use a computed signal instead. When the code reacts to a signal change, does it set a writable signal? If yes, use a link signal instead. Does the code perform an async operation, such as an HTTP request, when a signal changes? If yes, use resource or Rx resource. Otherwise, an effect may be the right choice. Are you using effects in a unique way? Use the comments to share your techniques. Thanks for watching. If this content was helpful, please like and subscribe.